catastrophic flooding, the country's fourth largest city underwater. It's almost up to my house. Seven million people affected by Harvey. It's a disaster. It, I, it was beautiful. Search and rescue operations continue. Officials calling on citizens to help their neighbors. Some of our neighbors are still back there on the rooftops. Heroes rise to help others in the middle of devastation. Are you okay? With more heavy rain expected over the next few days, we are tracking the storm and taking you live to the Texas coast. You're watching Northwest Florida's news station. This is WEAR Channel 3 News, first at four in high definition. Millions of Texans dealing with a water catastrophe in and around Houston. Rescue teams are fighting right now against the clock to rescue people still stuck in rising floodwaters. And this is before even more rain comes. Interstates and runways are flooded. Half of the country's Coast Guard helicopters are there and they've rescued more than 2,000 people already. FEMA has at least 900 search and rescue operators on the ground and they're now calling on citizens to help their neighbors. We've been sitting there waiting on somebody to come by and help us. We just lost everything I worked for, uh, everything. Officials say Harvey has already affected about a quarter of Texas. Those communities are expected we to get hit with even more what rain. So many people in low-lying areas woke up to the sight of water flowing into their homes. In those areas especially, it's often up to the neighbors to rescue each other. Stephen Quinn from our sister station WBMA has more from Beaumont. By the time people woke up Monday in Hampshire, Texas, it was too late. 3 a.m. It was getting pretty high and I noticed all my neighbors leaving. So I called him to see if he could come home and get us. Autumn Minton is among those without a home tonight. Her neighbors had to be rescued by boat as water submerged cars and covered the nearby interstate. Firefighters estimate 45 people in this community alone were rescued since dawn. Families and their pets unsure when they'll return. We're going to try to find a new yeah, we're home. Probably move. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And while crews poured into eastern Texas to help those trying to escape the flooding here in Beaumont, Texas, there were crews working to make sure the 400 alligators stayed where they were supposed to here in gator country. Gary Siraj spent three days finding dry land for his biggest alligators, nearly 300 of them, but time ran out. We couldn't catch them all. There's just no way. And and as you can see, we're, we're about a foot now uh, from some of, them, some of them being able to, to go away. Siraj plans to spend day and night monitoring the fence, keeping the gators at bay as the water inches closer to his own home. It's devastating, man. What do you want me to say? I mean, I, um, we, me and my crew, my team have, have, have worked and done everything we could possibly do. This water's just not moving. Chief Meteorologist Alan Strom has been tracking Harvey from the very beginning. We know it just seems like it's staying over Texas. Alan, when will this storm finally move on? Well, it's going to hang around a similar area here for a few more days. I've got the latest forecast track just coming down with a 4 o'clock advisory. Around here, we're going to see some changes as well, and I want to go over some of that. The clouds are now overhead, as you can see, from Destin, you know, all across northwest Florida. We've got cloudy skies, not much of a chance for rain through tonight, but the rain chances will be going up over the next couple of days. And we do have an alert to tell you about that includes southwest Alabama. This is Baldwin County, Mobile County and then into Mississippi and Louisiana. This just issued, it is a flash flood watch for those areas, uh, which is in effect through Wednesday evening. Um, if we do end up with very heavy rain over Northwest Florida, might see that expanded over this area. But for those areas, Mississippi into Southwest Alabama, four, five, maybe six inches of rain over the next couple of days. For Northwest Florida, we're looking at about one to two, maybe three inches of rainfall as the heavy rain will be moving into the area here uh, heading into tomorrow. So it's cloud cover over us now with the rain toward Louisiana and over Texas. You know, we're looking at Houston right in here. Still some very heavy rain from Harvey around that area. And as we look at where Harvey will go here over the next couple of days, this is what we've got for you. Still kind of hanging around, maybe over the south uh, or north northeastern Gulf, I should say here, uh, over you know, South Central Texas here in this area and then kind of shifting up a little bit to the north. That'll happen on Wednesday. So, you know, we're like 
uh, two days away and still seeing it over Texas at that point. Eventually, it will pick up the pace and it will be moving on. Uh, it's still being called a tropical storm with winds of about 45 miles per hour as of the last advisory. And it's going to be shifting up in this direction here as we head through the week and into this weekend with that last point being midday Saturday, as you can see, with a much weaker system just bringing some rainy, windy uh, weather uh, on up toward the Midwest. But for us, it looks like rain will be moving in. However, good news is we're not expecting severe weather, though. They've been looking out for the uh, tornado or weak tornado threat there toward the west. But for us, our future cast really showing quite a bit. We're going to slow this down a little bit, zoom in on it, and bring you a full report as we look ahead with the future cast in the main report coming up. A lot of people wondered why Houston wasn't evacuated before Harvey. The Texas Land Commissioner says trying to evacuate a city of five to six million people isn't easy. Um, for those that, that have uh, critiqued the way that uh, the evacuation order was not implemented, uh, we have to go back, at least for Texans, to, to Rita, where we had uh, dozens, if not hundreds, of people die on highways waiting to get out. Bush went on to say that Harvey is unique in that it was a tropical storm up, to, up until two or three days before it made landfall as a category for a hurricane. More than two feet of rain was dumped on parts of Houston in less than 24 hours. And that brings us to our question of the day. Should a mandatory evacuation have been ordered for Houston? To weigh in, just head over to our Twitter or Facebook page at WEAR TV. President Trump spent the weekend at Camp David monitoring Hurricane Harvey. It is the first major natural disaster to hit during his presidency. And tomorrow, the First Lady, along with President Trump, will travel to Texas. ABC's Emily Rao has more from Washington. As rain continues to pound parts of Texas and Louisiana, President Trump is keeping an eye on the storm from Washington. On Tuesday, he'll travel with First Lady Melania to Corpus Christi to get an in-person look at the devastation. It's the biggest ever. They're saying it's the biggest. It's historic. Uh, it's like tech, really like Texas, if you think about it. But uh, it is a historic amount of water in particular. There's never been anything like it. President Trump touting the rescue efforts via Twitter, also praising his pardon on Friday of controversial Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio, a move that continues to draw criticism because of its timing, coming as Harvey approached Texas. But Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert defending the president. I think it's pretty straightforward what the president did. Uh, I think there's some disproportionate coverage of it right now. The White House also directing the Pentagon to extend a ban on transgender people joining the military. The ACLU, one of several groups now suing President Trump to stop the ban from being implemented. And in another move, today the president signing an executive order reviving a program that provides local police departments with surplus military gear like high caliber weapons and armored vehicles. Already, Republican Senator Rand Paul slamming that decision, saying he will oppose the effort to end the Obama-era restrictions on the program. So this is somebody that constantly has talked about healing, 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 but almost every single one of his actions as president has been the exact opposite. So far, the governor of Texas has had nothing but good things to say about President Trump's handling of the first natural disaster of his presidency. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. And you know you can always follow Channel 3 News on Facebook and Twitter and visit WEARTV.com for the very latest on Harvey and the devastation in Texas.